Hello again. This is Mrs. Popperwell in the AMP lab. I am your online survey human anatomy and physiology instructor. We're going to be looking at this tan torso as we go over the information found in lab number two in your lab manual, body organization and terminology. Now you have your lab manual and you also have a printout that you can download and print and it will help you to review body organization and terminology. Okay, we're going to start out by looking at the body cavities. Okay, this area here that has the brain is the cranial cavity. Okay, we come down here in this area here where the heart and the lungs are found, heart and lungs, this is the thoracic cavity. Now the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity are separated by the diaphragm. Okay, uh, now within the thoracic cavity, again I said the heart and lungs were here, you have this area that has the heart and that's called the mediastinum. Okay, the mediastinum contains the heart and the area that has the, the cavity that contains the lungs is also called the pleural cavity the diaphragm, and the abdominal pelvic cavity. Now the abdominal pelv pelvic cavity is divided up into two parts. The upper part is the abdominal cavity and with the prominence of the hip here, the two hip bones, coxal bones, you have the pelvic cavity. The abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay, now let's talk about membranes that line the organs and line the cavities. The membranes that line the organs and the cavity. Now again this is the thoracic cavity. Now we talked about this or I talked about this with you when we were going through chapter one in terminology we were talking about a membrane that lines a the surface of a, an organ is called a visceral membrane a membrane that lines the cavity in which that organ is found is called the parietal membrane. Okay, so we said that the pleural cavity holds the lungs. So this lung right here, it's going to be on the surface of the lung. So this would be the visceral pleura. Okay, lining this lung would be the visceral pleura. I have this uh, part removed, but if it were there, that's what would line the lung. Now, I removed this part so we could see this pleural cavity, the outside edge of this pleural cavity. The membrane that lines that cavity is what? It is the parietal, and it's, it's parietal because it lines the cavity and then it, this is the cavity that holds the lung, so it's called the parietal pleura. Okay, now in this mediastinum cavity or area, we have the heart. So directly on the surface of the heart, we would have the visceral pericardium, and we would have the uh, membrane that lines this cavity, the mediastinum cavity or the pericardial cavity and that membrane would be called the parietal pericardium. Okay, now remembering the membranes down here is pretty easy because below the diaphragm these organs in the abdominal pelvic cavity is uh, found in the peritoneal cavity. Now peritoneal cavity, so a membrane lining the organ, there's the liver, the stomach, the large intestines, the small intestines, the pancreas, and um, the pancreas is underneath there, the gallbladder, the appendix, uh, the membrane that lines these organs, what's the first word? Yes, visceral peritoneum visceral peritoneum, each organ, visceral peritoneum. Now lining the peritoneal cavity would be the parietal peritoneum, the parietal peritoneum. Let's just go over the parts of this torso together because it is labeled in your lab manual, so we go, we'll go over the parts. Okay. The cranial cavity, and it has the brain in, in it, and it's pointing out that this is a sagittal cut. 
Dividing something into right and left halves is called a sagittal section. And the larynx is here, and down below is the, um, we'll be going and talking about this later, the thyroid gland. Okay, there's the lung and the heart. We talked about the thoracic cavity. Um, we have a arm cut here, an arm cut here with a transverse at, with at a transverse plane. Okay, we have the liver, the stomach, the large intestines, the small intestines. Uh, this is the abdominal pelvic cavity. We have the gallbladder. Usually, the gallbladder is depicted in green because bile is green. And underneath there, we would have the pancreas, and we'll look at that when we're talking um, about the hormones that are released by the pancreas and the endocrine system. Okay, and the appendix would be right here. And let's see if we've got everything. Um, th this gray or bluish structure here depicts a vein, and this an artery. Over here is part of the lymphatic system. Now the lymphatic system plays a role in returning fluids, helping the circulatory system um, manage fluids. And it, one of its main functions is to send the fluids back to the circulatory systems. We're talking about plasma, the liquid part of the blood. Okay, and then you have lymph nodes and then these lymph nodes, they play an immune, um, they play an immune role with your immune system in that they have macrophages and disease, uh, microorganism fighting cells that help out in immune response. Okay, um, now on your diagram it labels this torso as right and left. You need to get in the habit of looking at a picture or looking at a torso or looking at a person and describing their right and left halves. Okay. Uh, now remember that as I'm looking at this torso, this is my right hand, but yet this is the torso, which is on the say, same side as my right hand, it's at the torso's left. So you need to be remember that when you're facing a person and you're trying to describe a structure, you need to remember that their side is going to be the opposite. Now if you stand the same way they're standing, it's going to be on the same side, but as you're looking at them, then you need to describe this is left. Okay, let me go through those again. Now looking at quadrants, this would be the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, so the stomach would be in the left upper quadrant. Now let's talk about relative positions. Now we have superior versus inferior. So if you're describing body parts, then you would say this left shoulder is superior to the hip. This knee is inferior to the hip. Okay, so it's describing two areas because this hip could be superior to the knee, you have to name two parts. It's relative positions describing two things, comparing two things as they relate to one another. Okay, um, superior and inferior. The right and left halves again. This is the left, this is the right. All right, now there is sort of an imaginary midline toward the middle of this torso things that are closest to the midline of the torso would be medial as compared to something that is further out to the side is lateral. So the, uh, the shoulder would be lateral to the heart. The heart would be medial to the lungs. Okay, um, uh, let's see, the right eye is lateral to the nose, the nose is medial to the eye, and the nose is superior to the mouth, and the mouth is inferior to the eyes, and uh, just practice using these relative terms. Okay, and then proximal. We're looking at the trunks again, so this 
Uh, these terms describe a structure, and when we say proximal, it is the end that is closest to the trunk. Distal is a distance away. So as you're talking about, let's say the femur, as the femur articulates at the hip, that is the proximal end of the bone because it's closest to the trunk. Where it articulates at the knee is the distal end of that bone because it is further away from the trunk. The elbow is distal from the shoulder. The shoulder is proximal to the elbow. That uh, end of that humerus that articulates at the shoulder would be the proximal end and then articulating at the elbow would be the distal end of that bone. So that's proximal and distal. Now uh, we were looking at the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity as we're looking at the anterior view of this torso. If we turn it around, we turn it around, we're going to see the vertebral, the vertebral cavity. This is the cavity that has the vertebral, the vertebrae, spinal cord, and that. And this would be the posterior side of this torso. We also have another term, and you can think of the dorsal fin on a shark. This would be the dorsal view, anterior, posterior, ventral, dorsal. Okay, dorsal and posterior are very similar to one another. They mean basically the same thing. All right, and this would be the anterior or ventral half. As we divided this half with a coronal section, this would be anterior, and of course this would be posterior. Okay, anterior, posterior. Anterior is the same as ventral, and posterior the same as dorsal. Okay, we talk about medial, lateral. Okay, bilateral, bilateral. On either side, you have two eyes. Those are bilateral. Okay, bilateral refers to paired structures, like the kidneys are bilateral. Now, epsilateral is a little bit different. Epsilateral means it is two things on the same side. So, bilateral is uh, also contralateral on opposite sides, contralateral bilateral, and then epsilateral on the same side. And your book uses the illustration of the right lung and the right kidney or epsilateral to one another. Okay. And we talked about superficial and deep. When we talked about, or we are going to talk about skin, the surface of my skin, this is superficial. If I went deeper, if I had a cut, and it went down to the dermis, that would be a deep cut as compared to the epidermis on the outside. So the outside here would be superficial. As you go deeper, that would be deep. Okay, so the epidermis, the outer part of the skin, is superficial, and the dermis is the next layer. It would be deep as compared to one another. Okay, let's look at body sections. We already talked about sagittal, dividing it into right and left halves. There's also mid-sagittal, where that line goes through the middle. It's almost like mirror images, right and left halves. Now, if you go a little over parasagittal, like right here, it would not be equal halves, but it would be dividing the body into right and left parts. Okay, parasagittal. Medial, median is also mid-sagittal, median section. All means the same thing. Transverse, we said this is transverse. It divides the body into the upper and lower to, uh, sections. That's a transverse, also called the horizontal plane. Okay, frontal, when we talked about frontal just a few minutes ago, we'll see frontal again when we're talking about the sutures of the skull. The frontal of a frontal section is like wearing a, uh, also called a coronal section, like wearing a crown. Coronal means crown. Frontal section would be this part, 
and a coronal section divides the body into the front part and then the back. Okay, uh, refers to the, divides the body into anterior and posterior portions. Okay, we already talked about the quadrants, the left upper quadrant. So if a person was describing pain, then um, a person would record it if they were uh, allied health care employee and they were charting on a patient or on a client then they would describe it using usually abbreviations like the LUQ and L LQ um, is acceptable in charting for the abbreviation the left upper quadrant and the left lower quadrant the right upper quadrant and the right lower quadrant the appendix of the pain in the right lower quadrant is an indication that there could be a problem. Pain, running fever, nausea, and could be appendicitis. The pain would be in the right lower quadrant, the RLQ. Now, um, in your lab manual, you were to label regions. That is good to do, even though you're not going to be responsible for regions on the um, quiz or lab practical, you will be responsible for it in the future and you need to know those things. So it's a good thing to study those regions. Also, you should look at the organ systems and the organs that are found in those organ systems and um, start memorizing the organs found. Doing that now will help you later on as we get into the different organ systems. Let's see if we've covered everything we need to cover for this particular lab. I think we have.